Good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is Sabir, pronouns he, him, and I run events here at The Strand. Before we launch into a discussion of Will McPhail's debut book in a graphic novel, I'd like to share a little bit of history about The Strand. The Strand was founded in 1927 by Benjamin Bass over on 4th Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled from 48 bookstores until, after 93 years, the Strand is a sole survivor, now run by third generation owner Nancy Bass Wyden. We want to thank all of you for your support. Without our loyal community of book lovers and authors like Will and Karen, we wouldn't be here today, and we are so truly appreciative of it. Tonight, we are thrilled to have with us Will McPhail for the launch of his debut graphic novel, In. Will has been contributing cartoons, sketchbooks, and humor pieces to The New Yorker since 2014. He was the winner of the Rubin Award for cartooning in 2017 and 2018. He lives in Edinburgh, Scotland. Joining Will in conversation is Karen Chi. Karen is a comedian and writer for Late Night with Seth Meyers. She has also written for The New Yorker, The New York Times, and The Golden Globes. She's currently working on a book which should come out in about 50 years, if not later. And so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Will and Karen to the stage. <laughs> Yay! Hey, we did oh, it. Hi. Karen, I just, I just texted you saying we're the best. Oh, did you really? Yeah. I'm going to it really quick. This is for everyone watching. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, how are you doing? Very good. Very well. A little bit tired. It is 12 o'clock at night over here. Right. Yeah. I am the midnight talking boy. <laughs> yeah. <And> you, <laughs> you are getting me at my most vulnerable, as I said before. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the time of night where I would normally be like brushing my teeth, looking in the mirror, Very and really, nice. really doubting myself. Oh, oh, that's great, because I've got some killer questions for you. <laughs> um, although I am curious, or do you normally go to bed around midnight? Um, yeah, something like that, around that time, a little yeah. later. When I was doing the book, it like shifted into like three, four o'clock in the morning, if you can believe that. Rock and roll, baby. That's, a, <laughs> that's the life of a cartoonist. Yeah, I very keep, cool. Uh, Karen, where is good for me to look camera-wise? We should have discussed this before. Oh, How's this? Question. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna move you where you're looking. There's <laughs> quite... <laughs> okay. Okay, let's move your options. So you. Okay, I've got. I'm gonna look at you instead okay. of right into your eyes. This is what the whole book's about. You see. Yeah. No, this is definitely what the book is about. <laughs> looking <laughs> into my eyes. Okay, I'm gonna look. This is me looking at you. Does that look normal? Yeah, that looks perfect. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's good to know. Um, okay, here, this is for people who are watching. This is Will's book. Yay! We have matching copies. Mm. Not, <laughs> um, not quite. I've got the British one. Oh, right. Yeah, I have the American one. Um, so all the U's have been taken out. <laughs> it's basically the same. <laughs> um, for people who are watching, if you haven't gotten it, I really want to encourage you to get it. It's genuinely very good. Um, and I would say that even if Will were not here right now. So it's it's beautifully written, really beautifully drawn. It's genuinely very funny. Um, yeah, that's great. Did Thank that make you feel uncomfortable? A little bit, a little yeah. bit. Are you I good at accepting compliments? Um, no, not really. I, I mm. honestly, I'm, I'm finding it hard to just be in a room with somebody that's read the book at the, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. There's a, there's, there's a, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I no. I'm not gonna take it. Wait. I want to introduce you, Karen. Why? Right, okay. Before we get going, um, Karen. Gee, I think this is, is not. Okay. okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Is best known for her uh, funny text to me. No, Karen. She is the funny. No, it's. Here's number one. It is unfair. <laughs> you're now you're hiding. It is unfair of me to tell you how funny Karen G is. So uh, I'm going to tell you something that you that Karen G said to me in a text. Okay. I don't know why this is in my head, but it is. A, a little while ago, we were I'm texting. Nervous. Yeah. We were, <laughs> we were texting, and uh, you said uh, you said uh, that's that phrase. That's the ticket. Like that's the ticket. Oh. Remember this. 
I don't know why, but you said that. And then I did a sort of Seinfeld thing like, what? The ticket? What's the ticket? What's the ticket for? I was like, what's the ticket for? And then Karen said, are you ready? Hopefully the Polar Express. Is that the funniest thing you've ever heard? <laughs> Very kindly. I think that's funny specifically to you. Karen has this insane ability to put, to write to say these jokes that perfectly encapsulate her personality that's that so is, that so that's who we're talking to uh, hopefully it's the polar express that's that's so nice of you i'm a little bit angry that you deflected and made this about me so we're going to go back to your book um i i do appreciate that that wow that made me very uncomfortable <laughs> i'm gonna move on okay well the first question i want to ask and this is a real question because i think people feel differently about this is do you like answering questions about your book or do you prefer to let it speak for itself and are there things where you're like just read it yeah sometimes i do feel like that um there uh i've super loved talking about it uh, but um there are the reason i say that is that there are parts of the book without doing any spoilers that are uh, open to a lot of interpretation um the uh you know sort of captionless uh to go back to my cartoon world um parts of the book where it's all sort of uh yeah open to interpretation and i kind of don't like or i kind of like people to work that out for themselves rather than sort of you know being over their shoulder while they're reading the book like did you get that bit i'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean i do yeah. this uh, I did this cartoon for the New Yorker. I'm a New York cartoonist, by the way. Thank you very okay. much. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, I did a cartoon for them once that was this um, person looking at a abstract uh, piece of art in a gallery and a kind of mansplainy person behind that person. Um, and the person that's looking at the art is saying, uh, I said, I wonder what it means, not tell me what it means. And outside of that being like a mansplaining cartoon, it's all, it was mostly about like uh, wondering. I like, I, I like people to wonder. I want people to wonder about stuff. Yeah, that's very, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's it's a very wondery book. Um, yeah. There are moments in there kind of, because I know you just mentioned you don't want to give spoilers, but um, yeah. I'm kind of afraid to show a drawing in case it's spoil something, but they're like really beautiful. No, go ahead. You could, I think um, you can show stuff. Well, this one I think doesn't really give any. Not that one. <laughs> but it doesn't do you know like this is very much open for interpretation of yeah. what's happening in that person's mind and it's so beautifully done um okay so and i also did research for this interview where i went through and read other interviews you had done um oh, you did not yeah and then in one of them uh you said something about how like it takes you a really long time to draw but then the people people who re look at it will only look at it for like half a second yeah um, how long does it actually take you to draw this and how long did it take you to make the entire book uh entire book uh start to finish was about a year and a half oh wow yeah with the sort of write, uh, writing and then the because it, it was it's, it's kind of like you have to write the book twice when you're doing a graphic novel i have only done one graphic novel but that's how i found you kind of got to write it all and then draw it all again it's like making the, the whole thing twice um mm -hmm. so yeah about a year and a half um it the the pictures vary in terms of the time that uh, it takes to draw them but like that full page color thing that you just sh uh, showed there it uh i don't know like a, a a day it took me to draw that uh, maybe maybe a little more but yeah that's mm -hmm. the how does that not seem like a long time yeah that seems really speedy to me uh, all right <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah it's about a day but the the thing is when you're kind of in it and you're drawing it and painting and coloring it, everything you sort of you sp it feels like so long concentrating on it and thinking about every brush stroke and every uh, metaphorical decision that you're making that you kind of you're you're investing more time in it than the reader does and mm -hmm. so yeah that was one of the main things that i struggled with pacing just trying to ha trying to work out trying to trying to translate how long it took me to make the make the panel into how long they takes them to draw it and um and a lot of the book was me trying to slow the reader down as much as i can because there's like i mean there's like four lines of dialogue in the whole thing so you kind of <laughs> you kind of like speed through it and uh 
a lot of it was me, yeah, trying to slow them down, get the money's worth. Yeah. Wait, that's actually a really interesting question though, because I feel like, um, how how do you, what are like your tactics as a cartoonist to slow a reader down? Is it just adding in more details in the background for them to look at, or is it adding more panels so that they take more time with each panel? Uh, both the correct answer. Next question. <laughs> nice. All right. Crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Some, yeah. some of the things, like there's, uh, oh no, I've just showed. <laughs> You are truly showing off your pants. I'm at my most vulnerable. I showed, <laughs> off, my, up? I showed off my... I'm wearing pajamas, everybody. <laughs> I'm the midnight talking boy. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about? Well, yeah, I how, do I, oh, how sorry, do I... Slow yeah. them, how do I slow them down? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly like you said. Sometimes, like, there's, there's these um, funny sort of coffee shop scenes... And in those, there's all sorts of little details in the um, in the background that can sort of catch your eye and sort of linger and um, and uh, yeah, make you linger on the page. And then later on, when the book gets a little more serious, um, my main technique was just to sort of um, dead space on the page and dedicate whole pages to one important panel, you know, just so that people really sort of forced to look at it and forced to turn the page. Mm. um yeah it's uh that that stuff i was because it's the first thing i've ever done so all that was flying by the seat of my pants really just sort of making the decisions that felt right in the moment yeah that's super cool um and did you when you were writing it did you have to write out the story as though like almost like it were an essay of some kind first and then break it up into panels or how does how does that process work yeah it was there was a lot of if it's uh if it was a uh, movie there was a lot of uh, scene direction in the original thing um i just uh bug just came into my flat um <laughs> did you kill yeah, it yeah I, 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 no i didn't kill it i'm a animal lover oh okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> he's lying there dead in front of me while he's looking at me <laughs> like <behind> <laughs> he's <laughs> lying <laughs> um, i have forgotten the question again it was. I know. I know what it is. Um, uh, I, I sort of wrote out the plot and the basic story, and then uh, and some of the more important dialogue. There's mm. uh, when uh, when people read the book, they'll they'll see that there's moments of very important dialogue that lead to moments of uh, important uh, art, uh, artwork, um, and so I wrote. Uh, planned out those but a lot of the other dialogue and um was just sort of writing as i went i really kind of did it chronologically just so i could feel like i knew where the story was going that's cool that sounds really cool um did you think of it when you said you were writing in like putting in scene direction stuff did you actually think of it like it was a movie um no i didn't really um it was uh no i was very aware that i was um trying to i I'll respect more than anything else it's my first crack at the graphic novel and i wanted to respect the um the medium and so i tried really hard to uh, make it feel like a story that was supposed to be a graphic novel um yeah. and, and and could really only be told that way um so no i yeah i thought I'd think about a movie now but while I was doing it, I, <laughs> uh, I wasn't. Respecting yeah. the graphic novel, disrespecting movies. That's, yeah, exactly. that's, yeah, yeah. Exactly, um, down with movie. Karen, what's that picture behind you? This is actually, there are a few. These are by my cousin. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. Ah, you're crazy. Crazy. I, I don't know if this is getting recorded, and then I can, <laughs> should I just say what it is? So my cousin is kind of, he's really talented, but he's also very much a troll, and he was just sort of like, getting a lot of abstract art sold and a lot of times people would pay a lot more than he thought they would and he was like this is very strange so some of these i'm pretty sure is he got a little bit high <laughs> and then <laughs> was watching family guy and just zoomed in to the closest possible pixel <laughs> and picked the ones that he thought were like these are pretty and then put it out there as like some sort of commentary and digital art and people bought them and i think these were the ones that he just sort of gave my mom um but that, is, a, that is amazing. That's like outsider art. So that is like a zoomed in picture of like Stewie's face. I think 
so. I is, is Stewie a character on Family Guy? I don't. I've actually know never seen Family Guy. So no, I'm neither have I. Neither have I. <laughs> I've heard people say Stewie before. <laughs> I imagine I was, like a dad. <laughs> I, I was once on a plane with a guy who talked me through an entire episode of Family Guy, oh, line wow. for line. Because I said that, I've never seen Family Guy. And he went, oh, it's so funny. The scene opens, look, there's a family guy. And then he did like scene for scene, <laughs> talked me through it. That sounds, that's so funny. That's like such a, like a man thing to do. I've had people do that. I know, exactly. The, like the Coen Brothers movies. And now I'm like, well, now I'm just not gonna watch them. <laughs> You're making yeah. me miss out on this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No offense to, we're going after people tonight, Karen. No yeah. offense to Coen, no offense to <laughs> Seth MacFarlane. Just killed we're, another bug. That's yeah. two down. Are you living in a, a home with lots of bugs? It was too hot in here and I've opened the window and now they're coming in right, I'm shutting the window. I've done it, it's just us now. Nice, well done. Okay, um, I've got more questions for you. Okay. Um, oh, okay, this is also, I read this interview that you said you weren't actually thinking about writing a book when somebody reached out to you about one and then you lied and said you were. Um, how how long did it take you to come up with this? Because this is such a solid story idea that I don't think I've seen even like versions of it before. Um, did it just sort of come to you easily? Um, sort of, I, yeah, the Heather Carpus who was, who was then who went on to be my agent and then has now gone on to bigger things um uh she's like probably your agent at this point am i right karen and, wait um, did you are you did you get fired by your agent wait what <laughs> no. she was your agent and now she's like more successful for you <laughs> this is a great way to tell this book yeah. she's like, no more of this <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so she emailed me in fact she emailed me years ago and i didn't respond rude yeah, and really. then she pretended that that didn't happen and emailed me again and i did respond that time saw mm -hmm. it this time yeah she was like i've seen your uh, new york cartoons have you thought about reading a book uh reading a book? <laughs> <laughs> that's such a I said, I said nope it's all family guy for me baby <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really thought about writing a book and I, yeah, so I really did lie and said, yeah, think about it all the time. Think yeah. about it right, think about it right now. In fact, what I was actually thinking about was like closed pistachios or whatever, the, ins <laughs> the inscrutable mystery of closed pistachios. And so I like literally rushed out and bought a moleskin, wrote mm -hmm. book ideas in the top <laughs> and then started <laughs> for real and then started uh, writing down loads of ideas and the like the the best one that i had was just this very vague thing about how i'd always been fascinated about how um like combinations of letters and words can change a conversation from what feels like a performance into this thing that feels totally different and like transcendent in its intimacy mm. and heather went that one do that one and uh and then yeah she i mean to say that like she held my hand throughout the process would be like the biggest understatement ever. It was more like I was asleep in a cot and uh -huh. she was with a blanket over me and she was pushing me around. So she really like helped me through the whole process. Um, and yeah, that, that idea felt like something that was rich enough for me to build a world around and put, uh, build characters into. And uh, yeah, it, it, it came from there. Um, yeah. It just sort of, it's hard when it's, when it's, your, when it's your, when you've never done it before, it's hard to sort of go back and rationa rationalize all these mm -hmm. sort of decisions that you made in this like manic blur back then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's how it, that's how it came about. That's really cool. That's actually, so that's a running theme throughout your book um, about people having conversations that sometimes feel fake or someone sort of trapped in a, conversations that feel like that all the time and then having a conversation that feels like a breakthrough. Um, yeah. Isn't that something that happens to you in real life? And how, how, what's like the ratio of conversations where you're like, this is a real thing that both of us are present for versus performative conversations? Oh, I would say it's pretty microscopic, the percentage of the ones that do feel like that. It's it, like, I think we've all had them and um, it's just, it's, it's just, uh, um yeah it's it, I, I, I you could probably count it on you know one hand 
the, the, t the amount of times that I've properly had those conversations that really feel like I'm exploring, uh, this person has let me into their world and I'm exploring them and there's no performance at all. Um, yeah. I, I, the, Nick, Nick in the book is uh, chasing them and he's desperate for them because he's sort of starved of that and he's, this is this new world that he's unlocked. Mm -hmm. But I'm uh, not like that, I don't think. I, 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 I've obviously um, written a book about those conversations and how wonderful I think they are, but they're, the book is more an attempt to uh, describe those conversations that I've had um, as opposed to me saying we should all be doing this because sometimes I I, I want some sort of shallow interaction. Sometimes I, mm -hmm. I I'm not sort of desperate for it like Nick is. Mm -hmm. That that yeah, that's interesting. I can't believe you. That, Have you that, ever had any Karen? Have you ever had any of those conversations? Well, I do, but now I'm worried that maybe I haven't because I feel like I've had a lot of them. But that's the amazing. I'm only on one hand, I'm like, man, now maybe I've never had a good conversation. And here I am being like, I love talking to my friends. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe it's more, maybe I've had more than that. No, but that's amazing that you have them all the time. Oh, I don't think I have them all the time. But I think, um, but so you know, some, there's something I really like, which I think also happens in your book where, um, you know, when you meet someone for the first time in sort of any context, what did you do? All right, I just, uh, <laughs> I blew out a candle. <laughs> I've got a, uh, the strand people told me to have as many lights as I can behind the camera and I put a candle there because it's the only one I had. And it's a, it's a scented candle and it's the, the smell is overpowering now. So I thought, it's a, sorry, I interrupted. Go on, Karen. No, it was amazing. Because I'm just imagining there's like a slew of bugs like just off screen. So you were just blowing them further away from you. I'm going to spit my water out. Go on, what were you saying before I started talking about? No, candles? honestly, I forgot. Ah, <laughs> the amount of conversations I've lost because I started talking about my candles. Yeah. <laughs> Do you always carry candles around? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm like, in like my jacket, I would sell them on the street. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay. This kind of does lead me to a similar question though, not necessarily like candles, but like when you're working, what's your um like a work environment that's like most conducive to you being creative, I guess, and also kind of going off of that, are there uh, like books or shows or music or things that you lean on while you're working? Oh yeah, uh, I'm, I can, I, the, I, loads of guys uh, work in silence and I cannot, I definitely mm -hmm. need stuff happening in the background, whether it's just like ambient, you know, in a hipstery cafe or music. I work a lot to music, podcasts I listen to a lot of, Mm -hmm. um poog i'm listening to the moment you know the kate Blanche, Jack and Novak yeah. thing. <laughs> so funny. it's sublime it's a masterpiece mm -hmm. um yeah a lot of music the book is like heavily influenced by music um mm -hmm. phoebe bridges music is like when i when i see the pictures in the book now i like hear those songs from punisher oh wow that's amazing you know because yeah those are also kind of like her album cover too right that like right you know, they, uh, there's yeah. there's there's a scene at the end where, um which the is a spoiler so i won't tell you but it's yeah um yeah. essentially based around the colors of the punisher album because i was listening to that just like on a loop while i was finishing the book right right do you think you have to send her money <laughs> <laughs> you owe her anything maybe but yeah. i don't think i don't think phoebe bridges has the the monopoly on red and blue does she no i think she does i think those are her no. colors no no yeah. she, no she has and skeleton onesies yeah 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 that's actually her and that's so funny that's like also noel fielding on taskmaster was wearing that and then when i saw Phoebe Bridges, i was like that's noel's outfit anyway yeah um, but yeah. yeah and yeah. my main character does wear a skeleton onesie throughout the whole book no it doesn't yeah. <laughs> um do you think <laughs> that would actually be so fun do you think if you would notice if somebody dressed up as a character in your book and like came to you as a fan? Uh, what what character could, could they dress up as in the book? I don't know, I guess they would just dress up as normal people. If they dressed up as Nick, <laughs> yeah. you'd be like, you're dressed like <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, although I've had a, um, people send me uh, Halloween costumes of, I did a cartoon called Lady No Kids, and yes, they uh, wow. with like a, the goose, and people yeah. send me, people dress up as that all the time. Oh, wow, that's a great outfit. I think that and like Pigeon King would also be a really great outfit. Oh. Pigeon, Pigeon King, yeah. Well, if we're talking about like how autobiographical the book is, that cartoon is actually me. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So we're gonna keep going, tagging along these questions. Is everybody watching, having fun? Are you guys 
even there? Are you, do you even care if we live or die? Something I'm says, hoping people respond saying yes or no. <laughs> but don't give any, don't elaborate. Just say yes or no <laughs> in the comments. Um, it's, a binary, it's a binary thing. Yes. Okay. I did want to know. So this book is kind of uh, like a kind of a rom com, right? It's it's romantic yeah, comedy. Um, did you always know you wanted it to be a rom com, or were you sort of thinking about it being other genres and things like that? And um, um yeah, uh, yeah. I think I pretty much started um, as a as a rom com. Yeah, so I wanted it to be that all the way through. There's all there's all sorts of other elements as well, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, I'm definitely drawn to those uh, love stories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did. it was always supposed to be that. It's um, it's sad. It, well, yeah, it's sad as well too. Yeah. Well, that so that's something that's interesting. Is uh, when did you introduce the sad element as you were making it, and did you feel like it got too sad, or were you like, I want it to be more real? Um, no, I knew pretty much. Uh, Oh, it's hard to talk about without spoilers. I knew pretty it's the, the like as soon as I had the idea for the premise of the book, like the yeah. second idea was that um, it was going to be quite sad uh, because that just felt like too rich of a story for me to not tell. And uh, I felt like I had some um, life experience in talking about that stuff. So I thought I could write about it quite mm -hmm. honestly. Um, yeah. And then. Uh, Phoebe Bridges' second album came out, and it got a lot more sad because of that. And I was in, and I was in uh, lockdown on my own in this room. Oh, um, wow, yeah. And and so uh, naturally, yeah, that kind of uh, I it, I kind of put in that horrible bummed out energy in there. Go yeah. buy my book, guys. It's super yeah. fun. <laughs> That's so. So I feel like if her album had been delayed and there was not a pandemic, this would be a completely different book. It's just like one-liners every page. Oh my god! Yeah, it would be like walking on sunshine if I was just listening to yeah, Casey and the Sunshine Band the whole time. Yeah. Um. How do you think about? Because you write, you do a lot of uh, single panel cartoons for the New Yorker, and this is yeah. obviously many, many panels and an ongoing story. <laughs> I explained that very well, didn't I? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> me blurbing your book would be lots of panels. <laughs> this is, but the, he does one panel. This is many, many panels. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did you approach that differently? Or did it feel like, did it feel like you were using a different muscle? Yeah, that's exactly the right term. It just felt like a different muscle. Um, yeah, it, at first it felt liberating because just purely because of the space. I had more space to work with on the page. Mm. Um, uh, and, you know, when I'm doing like the, the New York cartoons, it's, um, it's, I've got to get fit in a premise, a setup, and a punchline, all, all a whole world in one panel. Um, and then I started working on the graphic novel. And it was like, oh my God, I can go really slowly if I want to with a joke, or I can be not funny at all. And, and, take my time with everything and um and so that felt liberating and then i went back to the new york cartoon and it was like oh no this is this is the fun bit this is the liberating thing i can talk about closed pistachio nuts and it doesn't matter about the storyline yeah. and so and so now i kind of yeah like exactly like you said it's just two different muscles and uh, each one feels like a break from the other it's uh, it's really nice yeah, that's so cool. Are you obsessed with closed pistachio nuts? Is that like? As <laughs> <laughs> I've done most of my day today has been spent uh, staring at a closed pistachio nut, like Tutankhamun's tomb. I can't get in there. <laughs> Do you have you ever tried to hammer one open? Yes, and let me tell you, Karen, uh -huh. the juice yeah. is not worth the squeeze because oh. because it's not. It doesn't get salted when it's in there. That's true. That's true. And yeah. so you get a rubbish uh, pistachio nut on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> Did and, you? and like cut, fit, cut fingers. Yeah. And also I imagine it must be really small, right? <laughs> yeah. No? Just like, like, just like Tutankhamun all shriveled up. And <laughs> that makes sense. I just get cursed after this. <laughs> yeah. With his little penis in a little jar. Inside yeah. 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 Interesting. Okay, cool. I think Strike that from the record, please. Yeah, no, we're keeping that on here. <laughs> we're completely shifting. Um, yeah, I think the sessions are probably my favorite nut. 
Agreed. What do you think yeah. is the most approachable nut? What a great question. Probably my my initial reactions, I would say the almond. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. It's, nice. Very... it's, wrong, it's wrong, but it's a good Ooh, answer. Oh, why? What do you think it is? Uh, the cashew, the humble cashew. Okay. I love cashews, but I don't think they're very approachable. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I've never had a comfortable time with a cashew. But I do like them when they're like roasted and lightly salted. That's a perfect cashew. Wait, I've got a new answer. Pine nut. Most approachable nut. I actually don't know what a pine nut looks like. Should right. I... Strike that from the record because, so Karen, sad. this is not becoming of you or oh, me. No. The fact I that know. you don't. I've invited you on this thing and you've revealed yourself to be a Philistine that doesn't know about pine nuts. I, there's, yeah. no, there's no uh, salad that can't be improved by a toasted pine nut. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, look this up. Because I, I'm, Karen, we're work, we're doing a, <laughs> No, no, sorry. I have an, to an event. <laughs> okay. Ooh, lots of cute pictures. Oh, you know what? I think I'm, I may have seen these and just always thought these are bad peanuts. This is a peanut that did not ripen correctly. No, you're wrong. No, it's not. <laughs> um, I think peanuts are more approachable than pine nuts. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. agree agree to disagree. Maybe Oh, what the, people are saying stuff in the in the yeah, comments. Really? Uh, cashews, all they perhaps uh, uh, peanuts more approachable. Well, she's she's with you. Peanuts. So without pine nuts I'm are sure elite. I've had pine nuts, but one of my friends is allergic to pine nuts, and so you know, just being a good friend. Oh yeah, but yeah, because nobody's allergic to peanuts, they have to stop like planes <laughs> because of them. <laughs> I met somebody on a train once uh, who was much older and she sort of went off on a tangent and was like, you know, when I was growing up, nobody was allergic to peanuts. And I was like, yeah, because they probably all died. Like, yeah. I think people were allergic to things from the beginning of time. Wait, if I have a baby one day, mm -hmm. um, number one, who, who am I going to have it with? Number two. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, how, well, what point do I give them a peanut? To try out? Yeah. I think as soon as it's born, right? Just because the doctors are all there, it's the, all the nurses are there. So as soon as it's born, you just give it a peanut. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm speaking from experience because I have an allergy that I will not reveal because, <laughs> like I, because like I told you in the preamble, I'm scared that somebody will uh, uh, parasite peach fuzz me. It isn't peaches, by the way, and they'll have the the thing in question sent. To, I've, have I given it away with this? They'll no, I think so. I'll have the thing in question sent you over to me. You just gave away what you were allergic to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I imagine it being carried on the silver thing. Okay, I'm giving too much away. <laughs> um, I will say just, you know, to be more vulnerable and open, if it makes you feel better, I'm allergic to kiwis. Um, Don't tell them, Karen. <laughs> if anybody wants to kill me, that's just the best, easiest way to do it. Real cheap at Whole Foods these days. Um, Love a kiwi. Do you actually? Yeah, I love them. Huh, rude. I just said I was allergic to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I had a question here. Um, oh, I also have a lightning round prepared. The reason I keep looking at this is I want to make sure we have time to go through this lightning round because I... Oh, my God. Watching. I'm so excited. Um, I put on Instagram, like, what questions people want to ask Will, and then a bunch of people replied, so we're going to do a lightning round a little bit. But, okay, I was going to ask, in the book, when Nick and Ren, Nick is the main character, as you mentioned, and Ren is the person that he meets, who also shows up in his life in a different way, um, when they're having a real connection and stuff, which is the thing we were talking about earlier, in those moments in real life, do you know they're happening when you're in them, or is it, in hindsight, you're like, whoa, this has changed my life in some way? Um... Uh, no, I know what they're happening when they're in them. And uh, that sort of affected how I wrote the book because I almost in the book had, the, there's a moment when the, when you have in one of those conversations, you go, oh my God, it, because it, it almost feels like uh, intrusive and you kind of think, mm. oh my God, do I, and you kind of, the, there's a moment where you almost sort of pull, want to pull yourself out of it, but then don't. And um, the, how I, uh, tried to translate that and the book is that there's parts uh, where Nick is in somebody else's world and he's sort of almost not in control of his footsteps and he's being pulled forward by the other person and um yeah there, I I almost wrote about him sort of snapping out of it and then coming out and then going back in because that's always been what I've scared of 
when it when I'm having one of those really great conversations because I kind of feel like oh no it's happening it's happening and then it's just about you know trying to stay in the moment and keep listening and stay open and yeah yeah so what you're saying is you're worried that if you're ever feeling like this is happening that also just means you've taken yourself out of it by thinking yeah 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 that, yeah, that I'm not kind of living in, in the moment enough yeah 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 I will say so before the pandemic one of the last fun things I did is I went to a Billy Joel concert in New York and I spent the entire time it was so fun but I spent the whole time just being like this is the best thing ever yeah no can <laughs> yeah. you believe this is happening I, it was it was also the third one I'd been to <laughs> but I was really happy it was I great. would love I would love to see Billy Joel was he amazing oh yeah he's great he's so fun and he also just knows exactly what the people want he doesn't play any new songs or anything he just it's all the hits and he's yeah, got gives them the hits. hits yeah wait did he play i don't know if this is a hit but it's my favorite billy joel song did he play lullaby uh, that good night my angel he did, but he, slow one it's a very beautiful song he played it and he <laughs> he duetted with his daughter who was right weirdly very sultry about it and i think we were all a little bit uncomfortable what do you mean? Like was she like she was lying on top of the piano and like No, she wasn't. She was on he was at the piano and she was at the microphone, like center stage. Um now I'm like worried for no reason that he's watching this. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's in here. Massive New Yorker cartoon fan. Um <laughs> but yeah, she was like very like, you know. Like well, I, like well, what you did, important. what you're doing isn't sultry. I don't. No, think. <laughs> well, I don't Karen. want to do it now. <laughs> Listen, that's my like main mating move. So when I cool. do, the people come running. Um, but yeah, she did it, and then I remember I was there with my friends, and we were just sort of like, "This is my. I don't think this is having the impact she wants to be having right now." Yeah, she was like Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> yes, and I think from what I remember um dressed in a like a red dress <gasps> yeah i know anyway um threw in the song for me how did we get to billy joel I had um, conversations keep ending up being about billy joel i don't know why it's because you weren't living in the moment at the billy joel concert yes you're right i wasn't but also it was really great not living in that moment because i was right. enjoying it so much um right okay you know what i'm gonna get started on this lightning round Oh my um, God, I'm, uh, should, uh, should I be nervous? I feel nervous. Yeah, I think you should be nervous just in general about your life. Um, okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go through these and you have to just answer them very quickly, okay? Okay. Okay, um, if you could live in any city in the world, where would you live? Um, uh, Berlin. Oh, okay, didn't expect that. Can I ask a follow-up question, why? <laughs> I, I, I went there just before the pandemic and I loved it. Oh, okay. Nice. I like it here too, Edinburgh as well. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather live with a rat or a pigeon? Oh my God, that is a wonderful question. Pigeon. Interesting. Okay. Would you rather live with a New York rat or a somewhere else rat? New York rat. Okay. Uh, what books did you read while you were writing this book? Uh, I, I actually didn't because I'm scared that I'll, uh, can I elaborate a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a really slow lightning coming down static round yeah oh, I was like, what are you talking about <laughs> I, yeah. I, was watching, I was watching you follow my finger there um, yeah. uh i didn't i tried not to read any because i'm scared that i'll uh not rip it off but like i i, I feel like if i read um I didn't, like um erin williams uh, commute amazing graphic novel then i would want to put a bit more of that sort of gritty social issues into mine or i read like uh liana fink passing for human I would, I would i'd think oh i need to be a bit more uh, experimental with the narrative you know i'd be trying to crowbar in stuff into my book that shouldn't be there because i really liked it in somebody else's so I, yeah. I didn't read any graphic novels while i was doing mine it was all music and films and stuff like that that's amazing that's also super smart i feel like that happens a lot in my life um that's great yeah. okay here's a real one that someone asked is who is will <laughs> <laughs> uh read the book Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and then guess which character he is. Um, cats <laughs> or dogs? What did you say, cats or dogs? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, cats. Okay, second favorite animal? Um, I like mustelids, so I will go with stoat. 
Okay, great. Are you afraid of dying? No, I'm actually not. Do you think, okay, this is separately now. We're going off. Um, are you, are you excited about dying? I just jumped out the window. Ah! <laughs> um, I'm I am I excited? No, I'm mm -hmm. just not. Yeah. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a very religious person. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I kind of think this is it. And it kind of makes me really love every second of being here. And so, yeah, that's, that's my take on it. That's very nice. Okay, cool. So that strikes the next question, which is legitimately, what do you think happens after you die? You think nothing. Oh, yeah. I You're think nothing. Fun. Yeah, I think worm food. Oh, okay. Yum. Um, okay, this is from, you'll probably forget who it's from. I was confused by it. Why did our hair never go into a proper bath, Mohican, when we were young? It always flopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, that is true. Um, I don't know why genetics. It's, it's unfair because God, because God hates me. That's why. Because I just said I don't believe in him. What? What is? What is this person describing? Is this your brother? I'm guessing. Could be my brother or my sister. I get it's the only people that I've had a bath with. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you get a kid and you make a big mohican when it's sort of when you're a bit of that make the water. Yeah. We uh, they. I was always sort of, you know, like how like uh, when uh, a killer whale is in captivity and their thing and their fin flops to the side. I just wanted to know that. Is that yes, you did. Sh uh, Shamu's got a. Why did you say oh, yes, you did? I just told you I didn't know that. Have you have you seen um, Free Willy? Um, no, I don't think so. But I know what it's about. It's about a whale that goes free. Karen, this is like your. Um, uh, Seth Meyers thing where you don't know any <laughs> cultural references. That's usually also because I'm dumb and not even because <laughs> like No, you're not. Um, <laughs> yeah, when uh, killer whales are in captivity, their dorsal fin flops over to the side as a obvious visual metaphor for their sadness. Mm -hmm. And my hair was the same in the back when I was a child. Gotcha. I think what you're referring to as Mohican is what I would call a mohawk. You go, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, okay, okay. So this is a great question. Will the sequel be called out? <laughs> Very good, uh, but no. Okay, are you, are you thinking about a sequel? Uh, I don't think so. No, not definitely not at the moment. Mm. I kind of tied up the story pr uh, as well as I wanted to, I think. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll do something else. Yeah. Um, okay, what comedy has influenced the humor in your cartoons? Oh man, um, uh, current stuff, I would say a lot of uh, Kate Ballant, John Early, uh, that kind of um, sort of, not abstract, but sort of out of the mainstream humor. Um, mm -hmm. All uh, all the stuff I watched a lot of, um, when I was growing up, it was all kind of Alan Partridge and Brass Eye and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Green Wing and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I guess that. Nice. Okay. And then this is the final question they asked, which is how tall is Will? Uh, how tall am I? Six yeah. foot one. Last, me last measured. Okay. Nice. Very fun. In case anybody's wondering, I'm five, one and a half. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. We're going to move on to audience questions. Are you having fun, Will? Yes, that was, was the lightning round. Did everyone okay. enjoy the lightning round? <laughs> Everybody reply yes or no and put a period at the end of your answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. I'm going to open up. Uh, someone says, oh, I'm the same height as somebody here. That's so exciting. Okay, wait, Elvia, okay, if you're the same height as me, which is five one and a half, do you say you're five one or five two when people ask? Please get back you gotta, to me. you got to round it up, surely. No, I think I, I sometimes I round down because I don't want people to think too highly of me. <laughs> okay, here's some questions from the audience is from somebody named Sarah. Um, is there anything you still struggle with drawing wise that you're constantly trying to get right? Oh, man. Um, oh, yeah, loads of stuff. Hands are really hard. Always struggle mm -hmm. with hands. Yeah. Um, there was a period when the unspeakable man was the president where I had to draw him a little bit and he was really hard to draw. I think probably because I hated doing it. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Hand, yeah, hand. I'll say I'll say yeah. hands. It was hard. Yeah. Sorry, Karen, what were you going to say? No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just saying, how funny would it be if it turned out you were describing Barack Obama? <laughs> we liked him. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. Um, well, what's something... Let's do a hand drawing class right now. <laughs> everybody, get, everybody get a sketch pad. What time is it? Okay, we have got 50 minutes. I'm only joking. Okay, next one. Did you do the thing growing up where you outline your hand at school and then you draw it into a turkey? Oh, oh! I was with you until the turkey part. <laughs> You've never done the. I think that's a common thing. Does that not happen at school? No, I, I we did that. That was the way you sort of had physical contact with the person you had a crush on. You drew, you drew the hand. You did the hand thing. Um, Wait, what, how is that a turkey? turkey? Which part of the turkey is this? This is this is the the head of the turkey, and so then you would draw like a little beak and everything, and then these are all the feathers. Oh. Sort of see it. I think this is obviously now when I look at people's hands, I go, nice turkey. <laughs> um, I think this is a, maybe that's, I guess it's also you guys don't celebrate Thanksgiving in England. Um, oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Very Thanksgiving thing to do. Okay. You're, cel you're celebrating the absence of us with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Every British Thanksgiving, you're just like, thank God they're gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah it, would be, it would be weird for us to celebrate the fact that we got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Huh. Okay. Uh, what's something small that's been Ooh, bringing you English. a lot of joy lately? What? Say that again. What's something small that's been bringing you a lot of joy lately? Closed pistachios. <laughs> okay. They also. Uh, yeah. What were you saying? Nothing. I stopped. That was okay. it. Cool. Um, given your expertise in pigeons, what do you think would win in a fight, a New York City street pigeon or an Edinburgh street pigeon? This is a great question. Oh. A cl uh, absolutely in one round knock out the New York pigeons. Let me tell you something. Okay. There is a turf war in Edinburgh <laughs> between the pigeons and the seagulls, and oh. the, the seagulls are winning pretty easily. I <laughs> see there are, you see like fights in the street between them. And I saw, I was walking home one day and I, you see uh, seagulls dragging pigeon carcasses across the street. Wait, what? No. I'm serious. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like uh it's full on it's full on war. Have you ever seen one like attack the other one? Uh yeah, yeah, I've seen seagulls attack pigeons. It's happening all the time. That's, has anybody doing anything about it? And uh <laughs> uh me, I'm the only guy who cares. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only one who gives a damn in this town. And <laughs> um so that means so that makes me think that the the uh, the New York pigeons would win because if the Edinburgh ones can't even take a seagull, then what chance have they got? Are seagulls much bigger though? Aren't they like in my yeah. when they're like twice the size of a pigeon? Yeah, but the end, but they're seafaring, aren't they? They've got the webbed feet, just like get them in a tree or something. That's they've true. They've got no got no chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a great answer. Um, okay. So someone wants to know how did the two of you meet officially? Oh. I want to say I think, Instagram. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about the first time we met in person. Yes, that was in Edinburgh. Which was here in Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah I really wish I'd seen a turf war between the birds. That would have been. So <laughs> it, it, it wasn't happening then. It was in the peaceful days when you came. Yeah, um, yeah it was in Edinburgh, wasn't it? You came. You were traveling around Scotland. Mm -hmm. Me and my friend Sammy, who I think is maybe watching this right now, or said he maybe uh, would. Sammy, and I miss Sammy. <laughs> yeah, we, this is true. We, my friend Sammy and I were hanging out, we were traveling together and then we met up with you in person, it was really fun. And Sammy walked away being like, that is the most charming person I've ever met. I'm gonna steal all his moves. It was very exciting. He was very- What, what were my moves? Were, I think you were very funny from the get go, even though you didn't know us beforehand, or at least didn't know us in person. And then I can't remember what else you did. Maybe like, did you buy a round of drinks or something? I feel like you did something that was very like, friendly and out there and Sammy was like wow that's who I want to be <laughs> I know I can remember a move that I did on Sammy actually you, I, I, I like to do this thing where I um when we're going into a room or into a building I go please after you and I let them through and then just as they're about to go through I like rush in ahead of them <laughs> and like knock them out of the way and I remember doing that to Sammy so maybe that's what he meant yeah maybe that is what he meant yeah at work, I do a kind of similar thing. So at work, we have a really long hallway. Uh, and if there's someone in front of me, I like to run ahead of them and then shut the door so they can't. 
<laughs> so we're the same. That's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, the same. I do a thing where if I'm in a really long hallway and I see somebody too too far back, I'll hold the door open for them when they're too far away to, to be coming through the door. So that, <laughs> and they have to do a little jog to get to the door. That's so, that's really fun. And also, now, like, if, if we can combine that with you then slamming the door as we get to it, then that yeah. would be perfect. That's great. Also, if you do a countdown as they're coming, so you yeah. really <laughs> let them know. Yeah. Um, okay, somebody asks, what is Will drinking? That was amazing. <sighs> I know, pure vodka. No, it's just it's just water. It's water. It is late here, so uh, it's just water, honestly. Okay, great. Yeah, is that your favorite drink? Um, no. I like uh, what's my favorite drink? Dr Pepper. Wow. Honestly, yeah. honestly, I would have liked to say you know uh, kale smoothie, but if the book is about revealing your true self, yeah, mm -hmm. Dr Pepper. So sue okay. me. Cool. I won't sue you, but I'm really judging you. Um, yeah. Okay. Terrible, um, really. This is a, an intense question. Do you think you're turning into your parents? Oh, um, maybe. I may be turning into my mom. I don't know. I always used to tease her about how uh, clean she was. She's sort of surgically clean. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that happening to me. So maybe. Um, she has a much more cosmically worthwhile job than me. So I haven't turned her into her that much. Mm -hmm. See, this is what I said about this time of night where I get self judgy. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'm it's staring okay. I'm staring at the I'm staring into the mirror going like, so cartoons, is it? That's just the whole the whole this is what this is all about. You're drawing cartoons. <laughs> That's what your ancestors came down from the islands of Scotland for you to do. <laughs> When there's a hospital, like two minutes drive away, and you want to do cartoons. <laughs> no, I hope I'm turning him into, into my mom. She's the absolute best. Oh, that's so nice. Has she read this book? Yeah, she was the first to read it. Oh my, did she like it? Yeah, she did. Well, she, 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 she liked it, but it kind of uh, destroyed her a little bit. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. If who's read it? I'm sure that yeah, that feels a bit intense to be like, Mom, <laughs> <look at this." laughs> yeah. Um, okay, wait, this is a question I was curious about that I just asked before, though, which is who's like when you were writing it, who's the target audience for your book, or did you have one in mind? Um, no, I really didn't have one in mind. I was just mm -hmm. kind of, um, uh, like I said, just like one decision to the next, just trying to do what felt right. I really wasn't kind of. So I, I, I would, I wasn't thinking out a specific people. I had a sort of, I always had the audience in mind. I really care about the fact that they're gonna take out the time out of their day to read it and spend the money to buy it. And I figured, you know, if I'm gonna, if they're gonna do that, then I better give them something that matters and something that I really put a lot of effort into. But I didn't really care about who was it, who it was gonna be, who was gonna read it. Mm. Okay, that's a good answer. What if I was like, that's a bad answer? I guess I wouldn't have said that. Um, okay, if you wrote a memoir, what would you title it? A memoir? Yeah. Um, my name is uh, Will McPhail, and that got me a lot of teasing in high school. Mm -hmm. So I would guess I would go for something like Will McWin or Will McSuccess, <laughs> Will McVictory. Yes. And do you think this would make people want to read your book? <laughs> <laughs> and it's me and it's me on the front shirtless. Yeah. And it says Will McVictory. Someone Mc like Sorry, go McVictory is too close to those biscuits, McVitie's biscuits. Oh yeah. The digestives? Are they digestives? Yeah. Um, the digestives. Digestives. Somebody asks in a hypothetical film adaptation of In, which is it hypothetical? Is that something you're thinking about? And then the follow-up question is, would you cast Emma Thompson as the mom? And I'm asking because you drew Emma Thompson in case you didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't do that uh, purposefully, uh, but absolutely Emma Thompson. Yeah. Uh, and, and I want it to be a graphic novel, not a movie because I'm an artist. <laughs> Oh, well. but, uh, but, but if somebody gives me enough money and Emma Thompson is knocking on the door, yeah. then, then maybe so. Yeah, Emma Thompson would be, would be amazing. Emma Thompson or Sarah Lancashire. Do you know Sarah Lancashire? I don't think so. She was in uh, Happy Valley. 
Hmm. I don't think I've seen Happy Valley. I did for a moment worry that you're about to say Free Willy. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I love Emma Thompson. She is, I think she's like the best human alive. <laughs> she, yeah, she actually is. Yeah, and also I think that's somebody who in the public sphere is like, she's a celebrity obviously, but she's also like genuinely an artist and has morals she stands up for. So cool. Okay. Um, do you find it flattering when people say they read the book in one sitting or do you wish they'd spend more time with it? <laughs> um, no flattering. That See, that's one of the things I was talking about with pe the pacing. Mm. Like people do get through it pretty quick, um, even though I tried to slow them down. Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's flattering that they got it through. One of the sort of, re there's a lot of those kind of really lovely slash annoying compliments that are like, I got through it in two minutes. What are you going to do next? And it's like, man, I spent two years doing this. Will you give me a second? <laughs> um, no, it's lovely. That's so flattering that people get through it in one sitting. Like I said, I'm so for people to dedicate a couple of hours out of the day, that's such an honor. I can't tell you how much that means. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay. So more questions. Love your work and really enjoyed the book. Was there ever a point in your life when you considered another profession? And if so, what led to your decision to earn a living with your art? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, did zoology at university. Mm -hmm. So that was for a little while a plan. It didn't last that long, to be honest. I, I did the whole university uh, course, but um, I knew pretty soon in that I was going to do the cartoons and the drawing. Um, but yeah, I sort of, there was a half idea of doing like wildlife art or doing those sort of uh, scientific drawings of animals for zoology. Um, but no, I, I, I'd got like, uh, I think I'd got published in uh, some British magazines while I was at university. And so I kind of decided then and then it went on to get uh, to get into the New Yorker. So it was going to be zoology. That's really cool. Um, I know. So it's like, well, it, sound, it's, it, every, it sounds cool. You think it's going to be like whales and tigers and that. But yeah. most of the time it's like counting shrimp on like Morecambe Bay. Which I'm allergic to. Oh, it's oh no! <laughs> oh no! Well, don't, don't have any suspicious please. packages for the next couple months. <laughs> please don't poison me. Are you only allergic to shrimp when they're like raw, no. or can you eat them when they're cooked? Uh, uh, it's um, <laughs> it's all uh, it's all all right. Well, in from penny, in from pound. It's um. It's all crustaceans. This is why I was doing this, and it was lobster. On oh, a, on <laughs> yeah, a but tray. Is, it, it looks like you're just, it's a plate, and there could be anything on there. Maybe it's <laughs> <Yeah>. a little man. <laughs> <laughs> man, okay, cool. So now we know how to easily poison Will. Um, so the next question is, what are some ideas and images that are so absurd or hilarious that you surprised yourself in coming up with them? <laughs> uh, what well, is this in cartoons or in the book? Um, they didn't specify, so both? Uh, things that were so absurd. Um, some of my most, some of my favorite, car my favorite cartoons are the most absurd ones, and they usually don't get picked by magazines because they're too weird. Mm -hmm. But I did one that, come, I don't know why this has come to mind, but they did one, you know, those sort of claw grabber games? Yeah. I did one of those where there was a guy playing on one of those, and it the 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 claw grabber game was filled with water that had loads of eels in it uh -huh. and the guy was sort of swishing around trying to grab the eels and the <laughs> and the caption he was just saying i don't even want an eel <laughs> and uh i like that one i don't know where that came from or why i thought it was so funny but That's and nobody funny. else did because it didn't get published no i like it i would have published it in a zine in a zine yeah yeah send it out to everybody i know and they all write back like no more of this zine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please stop sending me mail yeah. um wait that i do i did have a question off of that and i can't remember which is oh how uh, much of the cartoons are would you say are your sense of humor and how much are you sort of tweaking them to fit the voice of you know whatever magazine you're submitting to yeah that is really interesting i uh started out doing that mm -hmm. just purely trying to emulate the voice of the magazine and then um for the first couple of like months it wasn't long because you soon realize that the only way to stay sane as a cartoonist is to 
um, just do the stuff that makes you laugh every time. Otherwise, you'll just go, you'll lose the joy of, for it. You know, yeah. submitting 10 cartoons every week that you don't like, it would be miserable. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, we're gonna do, I think, one last question because it has been an hour. We're gonna scroll oh. through and see if there's one that's particularly, uh, uh, oh, this is actually very cool. Who would you most like to collaborate with on cartoons? If you could collaborate with anybody. Uh, Karen Chi. I don't know if you've all seen the New Yorker video where she, I was so envious. She just got to do a collaboration with Maddie Dye. <laughs> and Karen Chi is amazing at drawing cartoons. It's ridiculous. That's so false. But that's Go so and watch, funny. Right. Well, there's evidence. Go and watch the video. Um, Maddie emailed me before this interview and said something to the effect of like, if William McPhail tries to get you to move to England, please come. And I was like, all right, good to know. Um, yeah, she's very talented, very cool. Uh, My yeah. answer's Karen. Wow, what a dream. Hi, Samir. Samir's back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to come back. This has been such a fun hour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and uh, to our audience, thank you. Uh, if you haven't purchased a copy of In, you can press the handy green button at the bottom of your screen. Nice. Er yes. Could I say one last thing really quickly? Oh, yeah. Okay, I've always wanted to try doing this. If everybody watching, if you guys are on Twitter, could you tweet at me and Will and just rate our conversation out of 10 to no <laughs> explanations? Just let us know what you thought. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Because it feels like shouting into the void a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> I hope they're all really low. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, and uh, have a fantastic evening. Thank you.